Hey everyone, I'm Charles Judd and welcome to this video covering the 1.1e blueprint topic of multiple spanning tree or MST. When it comes to spanning tree, this is at the top of the food chain for layer two loop prevention. So let's take a look at the theory and implementation of this protocol. In the previous two videos under subsection 1.1e, we've already looked at PVST plus and rapid PVST plus, and we saw how these spanning tree modes map a single spanning tree instance to every VLAN in the network. So if we have 50 VLANs, we'll have 50 spanning tree instances. Now, although our modern networking equipment is much better at handling the overhead that's caused by this, it really is a waste of CPU and memory resources, and it can also cause configuration or troubleshooting nightmares. And that's exactly why multiple spanning tree or MST was developed. Originally, Cisco developed MISTP, which stands for Multiple Instances Spanning Tree Protocol, and our modern MST is an industry standard that was inspired from this. MST is defined in the IEEE 802.1S standard, and again, this was created to enhance performance, primarily by reducing the overall number of spanning tree instances in our network. So if we have 50 VLANs, we could assign 25 of those into one MST instance and the other 25 into a separate MST instance so that we would only have two total spanning tree instances where path calculations are taking place. And that's opposed to having 50 separate instances as we would see with something like PVST. We can group network switches together by a mechanism called the MST region. And MST regions can be thought of really in a similar way as we think of autonomous systems in BGP, for example. So they're just a way that we can group our switches together for common administration purposes. Every switch in the network running MST must be configured with certain attributes. And in order for switches to share a region, those attributes must match. First, they would have to share the same alphanumeric MST configuration name. This is used to identify the region, and you can make that anything you like for really easy identification purposes. They should share the same MST revision number as well. Again, you can make this anything you like starting out. I typically start with the number one because that just seems logical to me. But the general idea is that you can change this revision number every time you make a configuration change. Now this doesn't have to be changed. When you alter the configuration, it won't be changed automatically, but that's simply something that you can use as a change tracking mechanism if you choose to do that. And they should have the same VLAN mapping table. So this table maps an MST instance to a specific set of VLANs on the switch. And we define those manually during our configuration, which we'll look at in a moment. If any of these attributes do not match, then the switches are automatically considered to be members of different regions. Within any MST region, we're always going to have one default spanning tree instance called instance zero, and that is our internal spanning tree or our IST. This IST creates a loop free path within a single region. So if we have two separate regions, that means we're going to have an IST instance for each of those regions. By default, when we enable MST, all of our VLANs will be placed into instance zero. This is the same concept that we see with our switch ports, where we see those start out in VLAN one by default. And just like those VLANs, it's a best practice to explicitly define separate instances for VLAN grouping outside of instance zero. And that's because we have the potential of losing some benefits of MST if we leave everything in the default instance. When we do create new instances into which we assign our VLANs, these are called MSTIs, multiple spanning tree instances. We can number these one through 15. So Cisco supports 16 instances, one of course being instance zero, which is our IST, and the other 15, which we can define as MSTIs. A couple more terms to know. First, the common spanning tree or CST. This interconnects all instances of spanning tree in the network. So this bridges MST regions 
with instances of 802.1D and 802.1W spanning tree. There will only be a single CST instance in cases where this is needed. So this is essentially a mechanism used to present an MST region to a switch in a different region in a very simple manner. And we have the common internal spanning tree or CIST. This is a collection of the ISTs in each of the MST regions. Two switches inside the MST region, this is exactly the same as the IST. Two switches outside of the MST region, this appears exactly the same as the CST. So that's lots of theory. There's lots of acronyms I've thrown around there. So take some time to rewatch that if you need to and to fully digest everything that's happening. And let's jump into a lab and see how we can configure this. Our topology is going to be fairly simple. We have three switches with redundant trunk connections between those, and we're going to have VLANs 10, 20, 30, and 40. In this lab, I'm gonna configure MST on all three of these switches, and I'm gonna create two instances of spanning tree. I'm going to add VLANs 10 and VLAN 20 to instance number one, and VLANs 30 and 40 to instance number two. Fairly simple, so let's do that. Okay, here on switch one, let's run a quick show VLAN brief command. And here you can see that VLANs 10, 20, 30, and 40, those already exist. And I've configured these on my other two switches as well. So next, let's enable MST on each of our switches. First, let's say show span to take a look at our current spanning tree configuration. And we're going to, of course, see instances for the default native VLAN of VLAN 1. We're going to see an instance for VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30, and VLAN 40. We see all of those separate instances, of course, because we're running PVST mode currently. So let's consolidate those with MST. If we go under global configuration mode and we say spanning hyphen tree mode, and we look at our contextual help options, we can see the options we've previously examined, and this time we want to say MST. So let's break out of there. And here, let's say show spanning hyphen tree MST configuration. And notice we can see this instance doesn't have a name. That's because it is our default instance of instance zero, which we can see here. And as we mentioned earlier, all of our VLANs are by default mapped into this default instance, instance zero. We can also see that this is the only instance of MST configured. So let's jump on switch two and let's enable this here as well under global configuration mode, spanning hyphen tree mode MST. We'll do the same on switch three, spanning hyphen tree mode MST. So that's good. So now we have MST configured on all of our switches. And what we want to do next is to create some different instances and assign our VLANs into those. Let's go back to switch one. Let's go back under global configuration mode. And we need to go under MST configuration mode next by saying spanning hyphen tree MST configuration. You'll notice our prompt has changed to MST configuration mode, letting us know that. And remember those attributes that we need to assign, which are the configuration name, the revision number, and the VLAN mapping. We need to create each of those, so let's do that. We can say name, and I'm just gonna call this configuration MST for simplicity. We can set the revision number by using the revision keyword, followed by a number zero through 65,535. I always just start with one, so I'll do that. And now we can map VLANs to our instances. So let's say instance, if we look at contextual help, we can give this an ID of zero through 4,094. Zero is already the default, so I'm just gonna call this instance one, and we can assign now VLANs. So let's say VLAN followed by the numbers that we want to assign to this instance, which of course for me are VLANs 10 and 20. And then we can hit enter, very simple to do. Let's create instance two now, and let's assign our other two VLANs, VLAN 30 and 40, to that instance. Let's hit enter. We'll break out and we'll say show span MST configuration. And now you can see 
we have three instances. We have, of course, our instance zero, where all of our unassigned VLANs are mapped to. And we have instance one for VLAN 10 and 20, and instance two for VLANs 30 and 40. So that all looks good. Let's now say show run, pipe to begin spanning hyphen tree MST. And this is just gonna give me a look at the configuration. So we can see that here. This is just going to allow me to save a little bit of time by copying this. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste that into switches two and three just to save some time with configuration. So there we go, We've got those pasted in place. That looks good. Let's go back to switch one now. Let's break out of the show command and let's say show span. So now you'll notice we're told spanning tree is enabled with the MSTP protocol. We see instance zero, MST zero, containing, of course, the VLANs that we haven't assigned to anything. And we'll see instance one, MST one, and finally instance two, MST two. So rather than having a separate instance for each of our VLANs, here we only have three instances now. Our default, we have instance one and instance two. So we've successfully consolidated spanning tree in our network. Just a couple more things to look at. Let's say show span MST zero, and this is going to show us information specifically about an instance that we indicate. In this case, by choosing instance zero, we're looking at the IST, the internal spanning tree. And that's why we actually see this message telling us that this switch is the root for the CIST, the common internal spanning tree. If we arrow up and do the same for instance one, you'll see that this is also the root switch for instance one. And if we look at instance two, we're gonna see the exact same thing. This switch is the root for instance two as well. And of course, that's because we have the lowest MAC address in the network. Now we can influence this by changing the priority specifically for an MST instance. Let's jump over to switch two. Spanning hyphen tree MST for instance two, if we look at contextual help, you'll see that we have a couple of options here. We can manually assign a priority value using intervals of 4,096, or we could simply say root, and we could indicate this as a primary or a secondary root, just like we looked at with PBST+. This would allow the switch to dynamically assign a priority value. Now the consideration with using this dynamic assignment is that later if we introduce a new switch into the network that has a lower priority value than this root switch, that is going to become the root bridge. And this dynamic assignment is not gonna take any further actions. It's not gonna to continue to calculate that. It only calculates that at the time that you enter the command. So if we want to be absolutely sure that this won't change, then what we wanna do is to statically assign a priority. And if we look at this, if we say priority and look at contextual help, again, we have to do that in increments of 4,096. And we can even use zero as our priority to make sure that this is always going to be the root bridge. Let's now say show span MST2. And you'll notice that this switch is now the root for MST2, just as we would expect to see. So that completes a look at MST, multiple spanning tree protocol. I hope you found this content useful and I wanna thank you sincerely for watching.